Well, George Shooter, this is the interview I hoped would never happen. <laughs> it's the end of, of an era. The great man, now the second... Are you going somewhere? The second highest uh, Premiership player of all time has finally hung up his boots, thrown away his scrum cap and thrown his last line-out ball. Fantastic, hyperbole. You're not looking very emotional, but come on, you've just announced your retirement shoots, a long, long career, and, and come on, it wasn't too bad, was it? No, it was alright, it was, uh, wasn't a bad ride, yeah. I, I, I don't feel too emotional, I mean, I've had a few months really to, to, to think it over, so I think it's not a case of wake up in the morning and think, right, that's it. Something hits me, but you know, maybe in a few months' time it will, it will sort of hit home. I don't know. I'm away, I'm just a bit stupid, I don't know. I mean, you're what are you, 47, 48 years yeah, old? Yeah, it's it's yeah, been a way of yeah. life for I don't know what since you were a kid, yeah. Well, I don't imagine, I'm a kid really, 18. Yeah, I've been doing it uh, 18 years now, so that's uh, you know, that's half my life, uh, third of my life at Leicester. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a long time, <laughs> whichever way you look at it. Um, it's been great. I mean, I, I, you know, I've got a lot of uh, tre treasured memories, uh, cheesy or what. Uh, I've also got a lot of memories I don't remember, so I haven't got any memories at all of them. Um, so, but yeah, it's 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 been it's been a it's been a good ride, as I say. And, um, I'm, so I'm I'm happy it's uh, it's finishing. To be honest, I can do that all the uh, battering anymore. Yeah, but come on, let's uh, you know, if you at the age of 18 were told you, you're going to play to your 36. You're going to win what, what? Seven titles, something like that, or seven? Is that right? Seven titles? S six or seven. Six or seven. Who's counting? You're going to play. You're going to have twenty odd caps for England. You're going to play in a World Cup final. Yeah. And you're going to be part of the biggest club in England for a long, long period of time. You would have taken that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, when you when you put it like that, yeah. Um, and I'm 38, not 36, but uh, thanks anyway. Nearly 38. Yeah, it, it, I, I suppose now when you start looking back on it and uh, reminiscing a bit, it does it does hit home just how long we're doing it. And I've been fortunate enough to be involved in some pretty good teams along the way. Uh, also been part of, of, of a great club. Um, so yeah, it, do, it does. It does sort of, I mean, we were talking yesterday on, on Twitter. I, I was getting all these tweets from people, and it does sort of hit home that uh, you know I've been living my life, but at the same time, it's sort of been in a bit in a bit in the in the spotlight, and other people have been following it. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's probably more than just me, so it's a strange, strange to think of it, it's an unusual situation. Now tell me about your outlook as, as well, because there's no doubt about it, Shoots, when you're playing rugby, you, you play hard, you play good, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty physical place, especially in the front row, and especially at a place at Leicester that prides itself on, it, on its forward power. And yet there's the other side of you, the, dare I say it, slightly witty <laughs> guy who likes to have a bit of a laugh, does a lot of writing, uh, uh, you're, you're good fun on Twitter as well. Um, is that the real you? Which one's the real you? I don't know. Maybe I'm a maybe I'm a little bipolar, a split personality. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy both sides of it. I enjoy the, enjoy the, the the physical confrontation of rugby. Obviously, I wouldn't have done it for so long if I didn't. Um, and I, I also enjoy the, the, the levity outside of it. A lot of that comes with the territory. You can't you can't be 100% uh, intense and nasty all the time. You, you, never get a wife for a start, you know, get your kids out of the house and, and uh, all that. So you have to find a, a bit of a, a bit of a, a middle ground when once you leave the club to go home from train or finish a game, you've got to draw a line on that and say, okay, that's 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 that side of me done for the day. Now it's uh, it's getting to the other side of it. So I think they're both parts of me in, in different ways uh, and I couldn't I wouldn't be here now if I didn't have one or other to be honest. Best memory, worst memory? Uh Best memory, I don't know. Probably if you put me on the spot. I'll probably say the uh, three, three, three memories. Toman Tom Park in 2007, we beat Munster, uh, and the night afterwards, and then World Cup quarter final, beating Australia in Marseille, and then just being on the field for the World Cup final. I suppose was was pretty, pretty special as well. But yeah, you know, I've I've picked three out there. I probably could have picked a dozen more. Been fortunate enough to be involved in, in some big games and some big wins, and, and also some, some not big wins, which is what we'll come to next. Uh, so it's difficult to glean there's well, one or two out of all them, but uh, low lights probably, uh, probably shipping 50 points at home to Saracens in the 2011 World Cup uh, period when I was captain, I hasten to add. So yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty low. <laughs> uh, you've got a lot of mates, obviously, friend, friends for life. Who have been your best mates at this club over the years? Uh, probably Lewis Deacon. Uh, he, he he joined. Uh, he came up from the academy just about the same sort of time as I joined the club. 
Uh, and obviously, we, we played a lot of games here together. We've been on tour with England and Saxons and all that together. So we spent a lot of time, uh, time together. He's, he's a good guy. I like him a lot. Uh, and recent years, Dan Cole. Dan Cole has become a pretty good mate. I think we share a lot of the, the cynical old man uh, genes. And well, he's just, really old, isn't he? Yeah, of course. He, 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 he certainly looks a lot older than me. And yeah. He, he behaves a lot. He's, he's far too cynical for his youth. Sure. But uh, yeah, we, we got on, we got on really well, and uh, I, I enjoy his company a lot. But again, you know, there's, you know, I could probably pick twenty or thirty guys who uh, I'd like to see on a daily basis for the rest of my life. But unfortunately, I, I can't. <laughs> no, and and you've you've kind of spanned across some generations at this club, haven't you as well? So you were very much uh, you caught the tail end of uh, sort of if you like the the first great team of, of all the all the England legends. Uh, who are the sort of maybe I don't know two or three. And again, there's so many, but two or three absolute standout greats who will always go down in your book as the true greats of the game. Yeah, I, I, the top of that list would be Jono. Um, I think that's, that's probably doesn't need a lot of explanation. But uh, yeah, when, when, I, when I joined, I played against Leicester, obviously, and I played against Jono. I've seen him on TV and all this sort of stuff. And I knew about the myth and the legend. And you just assume that he's a, he's a good player because he's a good player. He was born that way. But you get here and you, you see him in training, you see how much work he puts in off the field, uh, in preparation, diet, whatever it is, sleeping, anything like that. And you realise actually he's that good for, for more reasons than just being naturally talented. In fact, he probably wasn't even that naturally talented if you ask him. It's always all that hard work, it, it's just what made him the guy he is. Um, and then on the opposite side, you've got Jordy Murphy, who can just do anything with anything and, and make it look very easy. But again, a uh, huge work ethic with Jordy, and uh, ally that to the, the incredible natural skill he had, still has, uh, at anything, golf, table tennis, uh, drinking, he's pretty tidy at that. <laughs> yeah, he'd be, he's probably not your archetypal Leicester, uh, you know, big thug, uh, orc, but uh, he, he's, he's as much a part of this club as, as any of the people that have gone before him. Um, for different reasons, and um, you like a, you like a laugh. Um, yeah. Who who's made you laugh here? Who are the, who's the funniest guys, uh, purposefully or inadvertently? <laughs> There's been a few of them as well. I think one of the, one of the guys who made me laugh more than anyone was Peter Short. Uh, yeah, we, we we shared some very random conversations. With, I mean, again, you just find that's what kindred spirits at times. And I, I, I invited him to a dinner the other day, and he, he immediately walked in, and we started talking about some. Blazing Saddles skit or something like that and end up making each other laugh like a couple of schoolboys there. Uh, but in the modern era, guys like Julian Salvi, Ben Youngs, Tom, Thomas Waldron, these guys who are hilarious without knowing it, um, and just because they're a little bit stupid, you know, honestly. Uh, the things they say and do and uh, just you know, fuel, it fuels the banter and it, it fuels my fire, that's for sure. So what now? Um, I don't know really. I, I'm sort of uh, in limbo. It's, it's a strange situation to be in. I, been doing this for half my life and now I'm not going to do it anymore. I'd, I'd like to stay in the game in some respect. Uh, I've, I've, I've been doing some coaching courses and coaching schools coaching courses and stuff like that. And I'd li like to do that. I think that, that would be one thing I'd like to do is, is take charge of a school rugby programme and be responsible for uh, the coaching and, and the sort of play and, and the, all the different sort of uh, abilities of kids in, in, a, in a school programme. But having said that, I'd, I'd be open to you know, something outside the game, maybe media or something completely different from rugby altogether. Uh, I just don't know, it's, it's, uh, I've got to put my finger cap on over the next uh, couple of weeks and months and uh, find something out, otherwise I'll be out of work. OK, my friend, well listen, uh, many congratulations on, on, you know, undoubtedly a stellar career and uh, the very best of luck for the future. Thank you very much, Steph. Always a pleasure.